foreclosure, huh? Mm -hmm. Why don't you send me the details and we can discuss it when you uh, come to my new office on Friday. Oh, you got a new office? Yeah, on the 30th floor <laughs> in the heart of Buckhead. Oh, wow. Sounds, sounds like a plan. Uh, send me the address. I I'll be there. Lights out, end of scene. Scene three. Lights come up on Ozzy and Reverend Hawkins as they enter from an off-stage elevator. They enter Wolfley's office. Ozzy, come on in. Meet my boss, Mr. Hunter E. Mitchell, the president of the Super Green Bank. And you brought a guest. Yes, I'm Reverend J.J. Hawkins. I'm Ozzy's pastor. Reverend Hawkins direct, goes directly to Hunter, reaches out his hand to shake. Wolfley pulls Ozzy aside. You didn't say you were bringing a guest to you. Yeah, well, it's, it's not a problem, is it? I mean, he is my pastor, for God's sake. Well, we had other plans for you, like an offer. An offer? What, what kind of offer? You'll see, maybe. Nice to meet you, Mr. Mitchell. Hunter. Everybody calls me Hunter. Okay, Hunter. Do you go to church? No, I travel a lot, so I'm not really around often enough to actually go to church. Oh, boy. I, I think we need a drink. <laughs> uh, Greg, you got uh, any brown liquor? Uh, yeah, I got it. Hunter, <laughs> you usual? Reverend, no insult intended, but we're gonna have a little drink if you don't mind. No worries on my end. I mean, it's your office. You know, do what you normally do. Well then, that's two bourbons and a 20-year-old single malt coming right up. Wolfley goes to make their drinks. Hunter and the Rev continue their talk. Oh my, this is quite an impressive office. Pretty swanky, even. Yes, it is. Pretty swanky indeed. Here we are at the top of the world with a magnificent view of the western skies. At sunset. Where you can almost see California out there. No, not quite California, but man, I can see the curvature of the earth from here. <laughs> wow, this is breathtaking. What a view. It ain't all bad. Mine's just down the hall, facing north to New York City. New York City? Is that what you're from? Yeah. Before coming down here to the sunny south, I used to work at 53rd and Madison. I was a corporate vice president for Citywide Bank. You ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah. Those were the big ones. Well, I ran their mortgage securities business until the Super Green Bank swooped in and made me an offer that I couldn't refuse. It made me president of North American Operations, president with a chance to run my own shop, build it from the ground up, make it right, make it grow, and make it boom. Wolfley and Ozzy return with Snifters. Ozzy gets the fourth glass of ice water to Reverend Hawkins. Here you go, fellas. A little something yummy for your toe. Yeah, right on. Here's the new friends, not sham friends. <laughs> so you were in Vegas, weren't you? Oh, yes, I was. And, uh, ooh, uh, this is the good stuff. Ooh, mm, that really, uh, really wets your whistle. <laughs> but we didn't come here for no whistle. We came here to talk some business. Now, my friend Dickie Gibbons, he's a good man with, who got a bad loan from your bank. Now, can you help him out? Yeah, well, Greg mentioned your little problem to me, and rarely am I at a loss for words. But what? But I'm afraid that I have bad news for you. Unfortunately, my hands are tied. See? We've already reached our maximum number of renegotiations for the quarter, so we're putting a pause on that activity. Uh, a pause? Wait, I thought you said you were the president. I am the president. Uh, well, can't you just step in and renegotiate Deacon Gibbons' loan? Well, as I said, we're not doing any renegotiations right now. It's nothing against your friend, we've just reached our limit. But you said you were the president. I am the president, I'm not a dictator. And I've made commitments to my board of directors that will cease this type of activity for the remainder of the quarter. And that's just what we're going to do. But you're the president. <laughs> Any president like pastors can override their board, can't they? I don't want to. I promised my board that once we reach a certain number of defaults on our mortgage-backed bonds, then we would stop it and wait until the market settles down again. And that's just what we're going to do. Bonds? What? Wait, what bonds? Deacon Gibbons didn't have no bonds. He just had a loan. Which we turned into a bond when we packaged it up with about a hundred other home loans that were turned into one giant security that we sold on the open market. Uh, 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 what kind of games are you playing here? Hey, wait, you didn't sell Deacon Gibbons' house from underneath him, did you? Not his house, not the actual property. We still hold the title. But we did sell the value of his house on the open market. We sold his revenue stream. What the hell? That's a... That sounds illegal. Nothing illegal about it. It's just modern finance, where you roll up the value of your friend's revenue stream with about 100 other revenue streams and turn the whole thing into a securitized bond that we call a CDO, a collateralized debt obligation. A collateralized what? A collateralized debt obligation, a CDO. You don't know what this is, do you? No, but it sounds like some trickeration to me. <laughs> Give a brother a loan with a bunch of traps and triggers, and the next thing you know, you pull the old okey-doke on him. You, you're doing financial chicanery and making just taking advantage.
this house right underneath right, here. That's enough of this foolishness. You're wasting my time, and it's time for you to go. <laughs> come on, Rev. Come on, my say good night. Uh, come uh, on. Listen, oh, no, oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to lose my mind. I, it's just, it, it was an accident, okay? I, I, I mean, you just don't know Deacon Givens like I know Deacon Givens. He's a good man, a God-fearing, working man, a family man <laughs> who worked his butt off to get his family out of that project to get him into that house. It was his pride and joy. And now you want to take it all away from him. Why? Personal pastor, it's just business, and our business here is through. Mm. Uh, so you come back when you're done with it. Uh, okay. but, 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 but why can't you hear me? Mm. You know, it's the color of my skin. Just why can't a white man listen to a black man? It has nothing to do with race. It's all just business, and that business is done. Hunter turns away from the elevator door, lights out. Ooh. Scene four. <laughs> Hunter and Greg, I, I just want to apologize about what just happened. But I, I'm sorry that my pastor got out of line, uh, and I hope there's no, no hard feelings. So that's what you call it? Got out of line? Mm -hmm. Did everything short of calling me a racist right to my face? Well, um, he, he, he did kind of you know, lose it there, and, and I'm sorry. And in hindsight, maybe it wasn't a good idea you know, for me to bring him with me, but uh, that, that was my mistake, and I own that. Man to man, man to man, sir, I'm, I'm sorry. Apologies accepted. Good. Thank you. Um, and I want you to know that I know it isn't every day that I get a chance to meet a bank president. So I, I feel honored. I feel like I must have done something right for someone like you to spend time with someone like me. Thank you. Flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> so, Greg tells me that you're a bright guy, the savvy businessman. Is that true? Yes, it is, sir. Yes, sir. At least, uh, I'd like to think so. Uh, well, did Greg tell you about phase two of our minority development program? No. What's up with phase two? After what just happened, how do I know if I can trust you? Well, uh, okay, well, now, just know that even though I have great respect for my pastor, I'm my own guy. I run my own shop, and I pay my own bills. So, yes, sir, you, you can trust me. Okay. Let me share with you my strategic objectives for the rest of this year and on into the next one. Let me share my bag, if you will. See, I have a big challenge in front of me. I've been challenged by my board of directors to grow my business ASAP. Make the Super Green Bank one of the biggest and boldest banks on the planet. To, serve, to turn Super Green Bank into a first-tier powerhouse. In the New South, they have a name for this type of audaciousness. They call it a BHAG. A B what? A goal. A big, hairy, audacious goal. A BHAG. <laughs> You see, my chairman has challenged me to increase production and sales of CDOs by 50% by the end of the year. 50%? That, that, that's a tall order. Yeah, a real big BHAG. But I don't want to let my chairman down. When he issues a challenge, I have to step up and meet it head on. Meet it and defeat it. Show him what I'm made of. At least that's my view, Mr. Brown. Don't you agree? Oh, me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, meet it head on. Go for it. And I am, with gusto. With a single-minded fervor that borders on pure evangelism. So, tell me. What would you do if you were in my shoes? How would you essentially double sales by the end of the year? Okay, well, um, I don't know. Um, I guess I'd, I'd down the streets, find new deals, open up the pipeline. Bingo, you got it. Open up the pipeline as fast as we can. Flat out, flood the market with new loans, new deals, going deeper and deeper into urban zip codes. Oh, urban zip codes? Uh, you mean black zip codes? Yes, urban zip codes. Black, Hispanic, lower income whites, whatever you want to call it. Urban zip codes. That's right up your alley, isn't it? Yeah, I, I guess so. Yes, we know so. We've done our homework. And we found that urban zip codes are right in your sweet spot, in your hood, so to speak. Mm. So our strategic battle plan is to boost our subprime lending with Latinos in Los Angeles and women-owned shops in Phoenix mm. and African-American companies here in the heart of the South, Atlanta, Georgia. And Super Green Bank is getting betting that subprimes across the board are going to be real market makers. Market makers? Yes. And in order to lead that market here in the sunny south, we have to have a partner in the heart of the African-American community, in the middle of the hood, so to speak. We need to open an office on MLK Boulevard. Wolfley goes to the back of his whiteboard and pulls out a poster of an official-looking bank with an MLK street sign in front of it. See, we already have a branch of the bank on the corner. We could rent the office space to a certain mortgage company on the third floor. We could provide them with all the financial backing that they would need to build the staff and lease the space and set him up with everything he'd need to open a full-scale office. A full-scale office? Yes, full floor, but a city block, with enough square footage to support about a dozen real estate agents and brokers and admins, an office large enough to hold about 20 or 30 employees comfortably, 20 or 30 people, all working for Brown & Company. Oh, that's a tenfold increase. Yes, 
all for you. All you have to do is run that business. Increase your sales, turn those realtors and brokers loose, and get them to hunt down new business. Get them to originate new loans and generate new income, all in your name, under your company. Putting money in your pockets with each and every deal. Oh, wow, that, that sounds great. Now, almost too good to be true. No, it's not. It's real. Real business, big business, done in your favor, and my favor, and everybody's favor. If you'll work with us, it'd be our face in the black community. We can all make money hand over fist. If you do business the super green way, we can open up our pipeline to provide more lending to the black community. Together, we can all move forward, all move onward, all move upward, all making more and more money all along the way. Greg flips over plastic picture of Ozzie Brown, sitting in a suit in front of the super green bank building underneath is a caption which says, Super Green Bank and Brown and Company moving forward in the neighborhood. Oh, man. Wow. I'm blown away. No one has ever done anything like this for, for me before. I mean, ever. I mean, wow. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Where's the catch? There's got to be a catch. There is no catch. That's the super green way. And all you got to do is do business our way. Keep doing what you're doing, only on a bigger scale, more underlings. Just keep finding more borrowers.